Okay, so this is, um, for those who are going to have 7-6 uh, with me gone, I know I'm going to be gone on uh, Thursday, so this is for B-Day classes, um, and I just want to help you have an idea and an understanding of what it is you're being asked to do. So I'm going to do probably about six problems with you, really try to address the issues that I need you to be comfortable with before you take, um, before you take your test. Um, and so we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk about a couple of things and, and hopefully help you understand uh, where we're really trying to get to. Um, if you look at the homework assignment uh, for B day on the fourth, it's 54, 57, three through 43. Skip sixes and nines. Had a lot going on there. We're going to tweak this and, and really pare it down for you guys. Um, need to make sure that we walk away with a clear understanding of certain concepts. If you have the opportunity to go back and work on those other ones, that would be great. Um, so I'm going to walk you through it, um, through all of it, but uh, be careful. Look at the homework assignment that I leave for you that day um, and make sure that you're, you're focused on the things I'm asking you to do there. So the first thing we want to look at, let's just take a look at um, this very, very first part, solving exponential equations. Um, what we're going to do here, okay, there's a couple of ways we could approach it. Um, honestly, if, if I were you and, and I were trying to understand how to take and simplify these problems, my initial thought would, would be this. If I can get the bases to match, okay, think about it this way, 5 to the x equals 5 to the 2. If this is true, then the assumption can be made that x must equal 2 because I need the two sides to be equivalent. So on number 3, if I can get this 25 to be 5 to a power, then the problem becomes solvable. So let's take number 3 as a quick example here. 5 to the x minus 4 could equal, instead of writing 25, I want to write 5 squared. Now the catch to doing that is it comes with distribution for any exponent that was already there. Since I already had an x minus 6, that 2 is going to have to distribute through there. But the real beauty here is that now that because the, the 5's match, I can apply a log base 5 to both sides. And a log base 5 will cancel the 5's with the exponential leaving me with x minus 4 equals 2 times x minus 6, which is a pretty easy problem to solve. x minus 4 equals 2x minus 12. If I minus an x and I add 12, I get x on the right equals 8. We have a solution. The catch to doing these, though, is that you have to write them using the same base. So if I look at question number 7, right here, that's 64. Can I write it as 4 to an exponent? The answer is yes, but only if I write it as 4 to the third. That still has to multiply by the original exponent, which was 3x. At the end of the day, really all we have to do is get to that stage, and then the 4s are going to cancel if I apply a log to them. I don't even necessarily have to show that step. I can just cancel them and say that 2x minus 5 will equal 3 times 3x. Um, so be careful. Don't do too many of these. I, I am assigning specific problems. So be careful on that. Uh, make sure that you're getting exactly what is assigned there. 12 through 23 is where the meat of this assignment is. At least a good chunk of it is. And then we'll get a bunch of it out of the, the 30s as well. But uh, on questions like these, our job is to isolate the base of the exponent with its exponent. I'm going to pick one of the more complicated ones. We're going to take a look at number 19 over here on the side. We have negative 3e to the 2x plus 16 equals 5. Our goal in this is to solve the equation, which means isolate x. To do that, I have to start by isolating the exponent with its base. So 2x is my exponent e is the base. That has to be completely alone before I can move forward. So I'm going to minus 16 because I can get rid of that real easily. I have negative 3e to the 2x equals negative 11. 
and I can divide by negative 3. And e to the 2x equals 11 over 3. The negatives cancel, and I get 11 thirds. Now, that's some sort of decimal, what, 3.6 repeating. Uh, doesn't really matter right now. I'm still going to use some decimals anyway. Let's just keep rolling. Now that the base is alone with its exponent, I can get rid of that base by sticking a logarithm on both sides or applying a logarithm. I want to make sure my logarithm matches the base of the problem I'm looking at. And since this is a base e, I want to use the natural log. That natural log will cancel the e and bring my exponent down to a regular number, a regular equation. 2x now equals the ln of 11 thirds. Now, the ln of 11 thirds, it's a decimal. I don't really know what it is off the top of my head, so I'm going to find out. I'm just going to take my calculator. ln of 11 divided by 3 is 1.299. 1 1.299, and the last step would be to divide by 2. So x would equal, and if I grab, uh, let's see where am I? Back to my calculator. I take this and divide by 2. I get a final answer of 0.6496. You might have to round that, but 6496. So that should be a decimal there, not a negative. And that's it. Now, what happens when it's not e? What happens when it's some other base? It doesn't really matter. The problem doesn't really change. Let's take a look at number 16. Is the base with its exponent alone? The answer is yes. So then I can apply a log to both sides, but I need the log to cancel my exponential. And since it's base 7, I'll use base 7. Log base 7. So what this comes out to look like, the log base 7 will cancel the 7, giving me 6x equals the log base 7 of 12. Now don't forget our calculator can do that logarithm for us. And so if I do, I'll go math, up a couple, log base 7 of 12 is 1.277. I still have to divide by 6. That's what our equation still has for us. So if I go ahead and divide that by 6, I get my final answer of 0.2128. So these problems, they're all solved by isolating that base and exponent and then applying a logarithm to clean it up. And that will work all the way through 23. Again, you're going to have most of your work is going to come from this section. So talk to, uh, talk to one another, work together. Um, if you understand what you're doing and you see people struggling, be a good citizen, help out. But also recognize that by teaching, we learn. The more you communicate your ideas to others, the better you're going to understand them yourself. This next section, 24 through 31, they're actually really simple problems to solve. If the log and base match on both sides, okay, and there's just one logarithm equal to one logarithm, there's not more than one floating around, you know, more than one on each side. So this is a special case. You know, we can raise both sides as an exponent to 5, and those will cancel. Leave me with 5x plus 9 equals 6x. A really easy problem to solve. You just need to go through and solve these algebraically. However, if you ever get a solution that would make the original inside of this parentheses zero or negative, you have to throw that answer out. It's what's called an extraneous solution. Because logarithms can't take, you can't take the logarithm of zero or a negative number. Exponents don't work that way. There is no way to use an exponent to create a number turning into 0 if it wasn't already 0 to start with. In other words, 2 to the x could never be 0. There's no way to solve that problem. Because if you remember, you know, we graphed these. It looks like this. And it never actually gets to 0, no matter what we do with the exponent. So we have to reject those answers out of our logarithms. And on this problem, it's pretty easy. x is 9. But if x had been negative 2, well, that 6x becomes a negative 12, and I'd have to reject that negative 2 as a solution. Okay? That will happen from time to time in the homework. Uh, but they are pretty easy. Once you just cancel the logarithms, and that happens the whole way through this part of the assignment. Every single one of these, you just cancel the logarithm and solve what's there. 
Then we get to the second half of the real meat and potatoes of our assignment. How do you solve an exponential? Well, the good news is we solve it much the same way we solve the exponential problems. We need to get the logarithm alone. So if I take this problem 35, for example, I have my log with a base 4 of 2x. That stuff is all part of my logarithm. That's great. I can't have anything else in the problem, though, on that side. So I'm going to divide by 5.2. Divide by 5.2. I don't actually know what that is, but I know I've got log base 4 of 2x equals 16 over 5.2. Oh, 5.2. At this point, we need to jack it up and make it sit as an exponent on the, on the base. So we're going to lift this up, we're going to lift this up, and we're going to slip an, a base underneath it so they're now exponents. Well, Mr. Welch, what base should I use? Do I use base E? Do I use base 10? We use whatever base the logarithm has. Since it is a base 4, we'll use 4 and this becomes an exponent really got to make sure over here it just cancels and I get 2x equals but this I've got to put in the calculator correctly it's 4 raised to the 16 divided by 5.2 and if I evaluate that I get 71.2 now obviously I still have to divide this by 2 to finish the problem and I end up with 35.6 so x would equal 35.6. All right, that's pretty much it. Now, as we go further down this assignment, it gets a little trickier. Okay, let's let's be real, let's be real here for a minute about some of these problems. All right, let's look at 41. Now, how many of these I assign? These more complicated ones. That just depends on the, the dynamic of the situation, but it's still something you want to know how to solve. Okay, so let's look at 41 kind of closely here. Notice that you have a log with addition in the middle of it. Now, we learned last time about expanding and condensing. I would like to cram these two logarithms into a single logarithm. Again, this is not necessarily what you're going to be assigned over and over again, but I want you to understand the concept uh, behind it. We know that when we take an addition between two logs and we combine them, that we combine them by multiplication. Now, if I'm going to multiply x plus 4 times x plus 1, that means I have to FOIL them. So you can think about x times x. Well, that would be x squared. x times 1, that's 1x. Right? So I've got a 1x. But I also know that I'm going to have 4 times x, which is 4x. I combine those to get 5x. And then 1 times 4 is 4. All right. Look at that beast of an equation we just created. Well, I have my logarithm with its base and the parentheses alone, which means I can jack it up and put it as an exponent to a 5. That will cancel the logarithm. I now have x squared plus 5x plus 4 equals 5, or 5 squared. Well, that's just 25. And if we remember those good old days from first semester when life was easy, this is a quadratic. And to solve it, we're going to set it equal to 0. So we minus 25, minus 25. We have x squared plus 5x minus 21 equals 0. Now, I'm going to stop right here. Here's the deal. A lot of times we can get to these problems, and they can be pretty straightforward to solve. And if I assign you one, it's pretty straightforward to solve, meaning you should be able to factor it traditionally, you know, and then pull the two values out of the parentheses. That being said, this is a quadratic formula problem. I'm not going to hold you hostage over um, putting all that together, especially when I'm not here to help you out with it. So keep in mind, there's a world of problems we can keep solving. Um, the problems that you're assigned are going to be direct and straightforward talk to um, each other, look at the answer key, um, email me, tell me what's confusing to you. I might be able to get back to you, not necessarily in class, but uh, before I see you again. And then Remote Friday, guys, get on Teams. Say, Mr. Welch, I don't understand 7-6, I need more help. But you have to own this. It can't be something where you say, Mr. Welch, you weren't here, it's your fault, I can't do anything about it. Own your part in this, okay? Um, 
let me help you. All right, we'll see you in class. Be nice to the sub. Um, and uh, yeah, let me know what you need. All right, good luck.